Hello, my name is Philippe Girin, a professor in the history department at McNeese State University. And I'm Mary Roundtree, a local French teacher. Welcome to Your Grandma Rocks, where we explore the history of women who rock the world. Welcome and bienvenue à nos amis francophones. Vous écoutez la radio de l'Université McNeese. On the program today, she was an actress, a singer, and a muse to the fashion industry. And she made political waves too. She was truly a grande dame of French cinema. And a chameleon too. She did reinvent herself many times. Her name was... Catherine Deneuve. As we cover her career, we'll listen to songs related to Catherine Deneuve. We'll start with a song by Joe Cocker titled N'oublie jamais, or Never Forget. This song is dedicated to all the timeless legends and specifically Catherine Deneuve. Papa, why do you play all the same old songs? Why do you sing with the melody? Cause down on the street Something's going on There's a brand new beat And a brand new song In my life There was so much anger Still I have no regrets Just like you I was such a rebel So dance your own dance And never forget Bonjour and welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks. Je m'appelle Philippe Girard. And I'm Mary Roundtree. Today we remember the life of the unforgettable woman that this song was dedicated to, Catherine Deneuve. By the way, I wanted to credit Jessica Markstrom, who did the research for the show. Yes, she was a former student of mine and she did the script. Uh, so when talking about extraordinary people, we often think that they come from unique origins, like RuPaul Charles rising about poverty in Atlanta to become an international superstar. So what was the background of Catherine Deneuve? Was it unusual? Was she super poor or something? Not really. She grew up in Paris, very French middle class. Fun fact, what was her name? I don't know. Catherine Deneuve? Nope. Her last name was Dorliac. Oh, like her sister, the actress, Françoise Dorliac. Well, that makes sense. Right. So Catherine Deneuve picked a different stage name to differentiate herself. But we're not there yet. First, she attended Catholic school in Paris. Fun fact number two, what was her religion? I want to say Catholic, like her school or 90% of French people at the time. Wrong again. Her parents were Jewish. You're zero for two. Here's an easier one. What job did her parents do? I'm thinking something to do with the acting profession, but I sense that you'll trick me again. So shopkeepers, teachers, accountants? Wrong. They were actors. Actually, Catherine Deneuve didn't want to become an actress, precisely because it was the family business. But that soon changed, I guess. At the age of 12, she did a bit role in Les Collégiennes, her first film. A few other films followed, including some by Roger Vadim. Oh, I know him. Very famous director. He directed and got created woman in a notorious movie about a love triangle that made his career and destroyed his marriage. If you want to know more about it, we did a show on Brigitte Bardot, who was a star of that movie and the wife of Adim until she wasn't anymore. Wait, you mean that you've had other co-hosts besides me? Yep, I do get around. 
Well, speaking of which, Catherine Deneuve was also involved with Bardot's ex-husband, Vadim. The two never married, but they had a child together, Christian. I've heard of him, and also know of another child of Catherine Deneuve, Chiara Mastroianni, because she's famous. She's the daughter of Catherine Deneuve, and the later partner of the Italian director, Marcello Mastroianni. Though Catherine never married that father either, the only husband on record was David Bailey, the British photographer from 1965 to 1972. Well, wow, two notable directors, Vadim and Mastroianni, and a famous photographer. She knew how to pick interesting partners. Anyone else in her romantic life that I should know about? Well, reportedly, Clint Eastwood, Burt Reynolds, John Travolta, Roman Polanski. All of them Hollywood royalty. Right, and Francois Truffaut. The top-level director from the New Wave era in French cinema. That's great. And also Serge Gainsbourg and Johnny Holiday. Two very famous French singers. Wow. Though, to be clear, Deneuve is very protective of her private life, so some of these relationships have not been confirmed. Duly noted. Now that we've covered her private life, that might be time to cycle back to the start of her career. Before we get there, though, time for our second song. May I suggest a duet between Catherine Deneuve and one of her alleged lovers, Serge Gainsbourg? That sounds appropriate. Great. Here is Dieu est un fumeur de Havane, sung by Gainsbourg and Catherine Deneuve. Dieu est Havane, je vois ces nuages gris. Je sais qu'il fait même la nuit comme moi, ma chérie. Tu n'es qu'un fumeur de gitane. Je vois tes volutes bleues. Welcome back to Your Grandma Rocks. I'm Mary Roundtree, co-host of Your Grandma Rocks, where we learn about remarkable women. Such as today's topic, the French actress Catherine Deneuve. I am Philippe Girard. Before our break, we had gone over Deneuve's early film career and her early love life, when she was involved with the director Roger Vadim. How old was she? 19. Okay, and what about him? 15. Wow, that's young. No, I'm sorry. I meant he was 15 years older. Quite the age gap, especially since she was still a minor under French law at 19. I guess not uncommon in a male-dominated industry like cinema. You said they had a child together, right? Right. Christian Vadim. So did becoming a young mom derail her career? Quite the opposite. One year after her son's birth in 1963, she landed her star-making role in The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Never heard of it. Come on. We saw it together. Oh, you mean Les Parapluies de Cherbourg. Yes. Pardon my French. Always forgiven. It's a really great movie. A musical about star-crossed lovers. But with a tragic ending. A very original concept for a musical. Yes, like West Side Story without the gangs or La La Land without it being set in Hollywood. Funny that you mentioned La La Land because that musical is a direct homage to that movie, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg that Catherine Deneuve was in. The director of La La Land, Damien Chazin, he is a French-American who loved watching old French musicals like Umbrellas of Cherbourg when he was a kid. 
maybe you could run through some of the similarities for our listeners who have never watched the movie. Well, the setting is quite different. It's not LA, but it's Cherbourg, a small provincial port of Normandy, where Catherine Deneuve plays the role of a small shopkeeper. She and her mom sell umbrellas, hence the movie's title. Cherbourg is famously a rainy city, unlike LA. Right, but the main plot of the two movies, that would be very similar. Both are about two young lovers who have to choose between their passion for each other or doing something that is more financially sensible. So, passion or reason, like the plot of every Greek tragedy for millennia. Exactly. In La La Land, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, they are torn between their love for each other and the needs of their career. Just like all the young people in California who are hustling nowadays. Yes, the main tension in Ambrelands of Cherbourg is also very true to its time, the late 50s. The young lover, the, the man, he is called up by the army to fight in Algeria, where France was fighting a major war of independence in the late 50s. The young couple, they have sex before he leaves town to go to war. Of course, she gets pregnant. And the issue is, should Catherine Deneuve marry the first dude who shows up just so that she has a husband and some money to live on? Or should she be a single mom while her lover is away at war? And remember, it's provincial France in the late 50s, so being a single mom was a major scandal back then. So we're back to should you pick passion or reason? Another big similarity between the two movies is that they're both musicals with a big jazz soundtrack. Yes, with a big difference, though, that Embrenas of Cherbourg, that is all singing all the time. Even if the mailman just shows up to deliver the mail, he will say, Hello, in a sing-songy voice, which I found distracting at first, but then it grew on me. Another similarity, the color scheme. La La Land is very bright, colorful. And so is Les Parbles de Cherbourg. At least in the first few scenes, when Deneuve and her boyfriend, they live in the technicolor world of young puppy love. Another big similarity, that's the ending. Without getting into too many details, because I don't want to ruin those two movies if you haven't seen them, uh, but in both cases, a young woman has to decide, as we said, between reason and passion. She picks one, and then there's a heartbreaking scene at the very end where she bumps into her old crush, and she starts to imagine what life would have been like if she had picked the other option. And that makes me tear up every time. Well, speaking about tearful goodbyes, it's time to stop talking about your favorite Deneuve musical and move on with her life. Well... One last thing, it's time for another musical break, so we will use a song from that musical, entitled Ne Me Quitte Pas. Si peu de temps, si peu de temps, mon amour, qu'il ne faut pas le gâcher. Il faut essayer d'être heureux. Il faut que nous gardions de nos derniers moments un souvenir plus beau que tout, un souvenir qui nous aidera à vivre. Bon, 
Bonjour, and welcome back to Your Grandma Rocks. I'm Mary Roundtree. And I am Philippe Girard. On the program today, the life of the French actress, Catherine Deneuve. Before our break, we explored her first big hit, a musical where she plays a young ingenue who gets knocked up by her boyfriend and then has to decide whether to wait for her lover to return for more or yield to society's conventions and get married to some boring rich dude. The movie was a hit with audiences. Not only that, but it won a Palme d'Or at Cannes and four Academy Awards in Hollywood, including Best Foreign Film. Now that Catherine Deneuve was in an award-winning film, she could do whatever she wanted. Almost, because that was not an easy image to shake because of her role in The Umbrella of Cherbourg and how much of a success it was. She was now typecast as the quote-unquote prim and proper young French woman in movies. Who was just opposed against Brigitte Bardot? the other megastar of that era, who was known for her raw sensuality. And Catherine Deneuve, she then starred as the love interest in other musicals by Jacques Demy, the same director. Uh, those musicals were Les Demoiselles de Rochefort and then later Podane. And these were both a success, but that definitely backed her into a corner. She was typecast. She was this porcelain beauty, the ice queen. The French Grace Kelly, almost too pretty to be real. Still, people loved her during this Ingenue, period, and she got to share stardom with her sister, Françoise Dorelac. Catherine and Françoise, uh, they co star in one of the musicals that I just mentioned earlier, Les Demoiselles de Rochefort. She died in a car accident the same year that Demoiselles de Rochefort was released, in 1967. Wow, what happened? Well, the sister was late for her flight, and she got into her car accident as she was speeding all the way to the airport. Uh, the car caught on fire. The sister of Catherine and I was trapped inside, and, well, she basically burned to death. That's horrible. And her memory, maybe we could listen to a song she sang from that musical with Catherine Deneuve. Your wish is my command. In memory of their sisterhood, here is La Chanson des Jumelles, the song of the twin sisters from the musical uh, with Catherine Deneuve and Françoise d'Orléac, Les Demoiselles de Rochefort. Nous sommes de sœurs jumelles, sous le signe des gémeaux, mi fa sol la, mi ré, ré mi fa sol 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 ré do, toutes deux demoiselles. Nous avons toutes deux au creux des reins, c'est fou. Là, un grain de beauté qu'il avait sur la joue. Nous sommes de sœurs jumelles, nées sous le signe des gémeaux. Mi fa sol la, mi ré, ré mi fa sol 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 ré do. Et mon mari tournait les calembours et les bons mots. Mi fa sol la, mi ré, ré mi fa sol 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 ré do. Nous sommes toutes deux joyeuses et ingénues. Attendant de l'amour ce qu'il est convenu D'appeler coup de foudre Aux sauvages passions Nous, nous sommes, sommes toutes deux Prêtes à perdre raison Nous nous avons toutes deux Une âme délicate Artiste passionnée Musicienne Acrobate Cherchant un homme beau Cherchant un homme beau Bref, un homme idéal Avec ou sans défaut Nous sommes deux sœurs Né sous le signe des gémeaux, mi fa sol la, mi ré, ré mi fa sol 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 ré do, du plomb dans la cervelle, de la fantaisie à bobo, mi fa sol la, mi ré, ré mi fa sol 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 ré do. Bonjour à tous and welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks on KBOS. Nous venons d'écouter la chanson des jumelles tirée de la comédie musicale Les Demoiselles de Rochefort. Je suis Philippe Girin. And I'm Mary Roundtree. Today we're looking into the life of Catherine Deneuve. We only got through the first period of her career, the beautiful ingenue when she played in musicals like Les Parapluies de Cherbourg and Les Demoiselles de Rochefort, both of them directed by Jacques Demy. But she was itching to tear down her frigid, superficial image as a beauty queen. And so avoid being typecast, which is a big problem for movie stars. Well, she certainly melted any sauce of iciness with her major turn in the movie Belle de Jour. Unlike her previous roles, which de-emphasized her sex appeal, in that movie, she played a lady of the night. Except her time spent as a prostitute was during the day. Also, she's not your typical prostitute in that movie. 
She played a merry woman who stepped out on her man during the day. The French expression is 5 à 7. It technically means from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., but it's a reference to whatever naughty business may happen between the end of the workday and dinner time at 7. Even more than that, in the movie, Catherine Deneuve engaged in fetish fantasies like bondage, domination, and S&M. And it's the 1960s. So it was definitely ahead of its time. Decades before Fifty Shades of Grey became a hit, Deneuve was already hinting that prim and proper middle-aged women might have a kinky side. I'll never look at my mom in the same way. Well, that movie, Belle du Jour, came out right after Demoiselle de Rochefort, the musical that we mentioned earlier. And that was definitely a major turn in her career, a big part of her trying not to be typecast in a specific role, which is kind of a theme today. Didn't she pose in Playboy, too? Yes, in 1963 and 1965. So clearly, she was already trying to change people's views of her. But back to her love life. Isn't that around the time that she was married to that English photographer, David Bailey? Yes, 1965. The marriage only lasted for seven years. Deneuve later said marriage is a trap, and she never remarried. Ouch. It didn't keep her from having romantic involvements, though. As we saw earlier, she seems to have a string of broken hearts in her wake. Yes, you mentioned Clint Eastwood, Roman Polanski, Johnny Halliday, to name a few. Any more recent ones? Officially, not since the 1990s. She had some hot lesbian scenes in a number of movies. So it's even been rumored that she may have shifted her sexual interest, but none of that has been confirmed. Well, don't know if she is notoriously private about her personal life, and she's been ruthless about suing paparazzis who publish photos of her private life without her consent, and winning in court, big sums. The press knows it, and so they leave her alone. What we do know for sure is that she showed a sexual life that was at odds with her image early in her career in The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Deneuve also made a big political statement in 1972 where she signed the Manifesto of 343. You're the French historian, so please explain to our listeners what that was about. I can do that. Uh, well, this was a manifesto, the a public statement, where 343 women, dumb, publicly revealed that they had had an abortion. Which was illegal in France at the time, right? Yeah, that was a way to put pressure on the French government at the time to legalize abortion. These women like Catherine Deneuve, publicly dared the government to prosecute them or change the law. And that's what France did. Abortion was legalized after that, in part because of the public advocacy of Catherine Deneuve. I want to highlight one more movie in which Deneuve tried to redefine the girl next door image of her early career. It's called The Hunger from 1983. Never seen that one. I need to put it on my list. What is it about? She plays the role of an ancient Egyptian vampire who seduces David Bowie and Susan Sarandon. It developed a cult following that enjoyed the gothic themes of the movie and the 1980s new wave soundtrack. White on white, translucent black capes, back on the rack. The little goose is dead, the bats have left the bell tower. The victims have been bled and velvet lines The black box The little goose is dead The little goose is dead
We're alive and back. You're listening to Your Grandma Rocks on KBIS. I'm Mary Roundtree. Et je suis Philippe Girard. Today we are retracing the career of French movie star Catherine Deneuve. First, we covered her early career where she became a star by playing the girl next door, the pure virginal young blonde that people admired from afar. Then, we studied her attempts to avoid being boxed in and typecast, her notorious S&M bit in Belle du Jour, her role in the feminist movement, and her free-spirited sex life. But her career didn't end there. By the 80s, she entered into a third phase as the grande dame of French cinema. Which is remarkable in its own right. Cinema is very image-driven, so it's not kind to women after they hit 40. But she managed to make that transition and remain a huge star. The Nuff's career never fizzled because she transformed herself time and time again, like Madonna. She's definitely done everything, from small independent cinema to industry films and international films. These include musicals, comedies, dramas. I remember seeing her in Andochine, which is a very serious historical drama, but also in the movie Putish, an independent comedy, which is definitely not serious. And at the same time, she also did some artsy-fartsy experimental cinema. Yes, she had a role in Lars von Trier's Dancer in the Dark. Meanwhile, she remained a big part of the establishment. She was also the muse for Yves Saint Laurent, and she even served as a model for Marianne. You're going to have to explain that one for us. Who's Marianne? Well, Marianne is an allegory of freedom and basically the symbol of France, just like Uncle Sam would be for the U.S. I'm lost. How would Catherine Deneuve become a figure of the French Revolution? Well, my law, every town hall in France has to have a statue of Marianne, the symbol of France. And Deneuve was selected to be the model for that statue, which is a major honor in France. So she literally is the official symbol of France. Right, though she's slowed down a bit recently because she had a stroke in 2019. Yes, she was a heavy smoker for most of her life, and well, it's not good for your heart. She's also become controversial with the younger wave of French actresses. Are you hinting at her response to the Me Too movement? Yeah, unfortunately, that may be the one area where Deneuve is showing her age rather than her timelessness. Let's start with the obvious. Could you remind our listeners about the Me Too movement? Well, it's a pushback against powerful men, especially in the movie industry, who had used their sway to force younger women into having sex with them, like Harvey Weinstein in the U.S. I guess there was a similar movement in France? Yes, it was called Balance ton pain, which means rat out the pigs. Basically, women would go public about old bosses and boyfriends who had abused them. In the movie industry in France, there was a specific campaign against Roman Polanski, who's had a successful career in France, even though he has been on the run from American justice for decades for allegedly uh, raping a minor back in the 70s. And Deneuve sided with the pigs. Well, yeah, she supported Roman Polanski in part because she had worked with him in the past and in part because she thought the French Me Too movement was going, quote, too far. That's interesting considering her role in supporting abortion rights in 1972, where she signed the Manifesto of 343. Yeah, it's definitely a clash of generations between two waves of feminists. Those from the 60s who are all about sexual liberation. And those of today who are more about reigning in deviant behavior and emphasizing consent. But (laughs) it's now time for our last musical break. Which song did you have in mind? Well, we just talked about the Me Too movement, so let's listen to Balance Ton Coin by the Belgian singer Angèle. The title and the lyrics would be too complicated to translate in detail because there are a lot of puns and references, but trust me on that one, it's about the French version of Me Too. Ils parlent tous comme des animaux de toutes les chattes, ça parle mal 2018. Je sais pas ce qu'il faut, mais je suis plus qu'un animal. J'ai vu que le rap est à la mode et qu'il marche mieux quand il est sale. Bah, faudrait peut-être casser les codes. Une fille qui l'ouvre, ce serait normal. Balance ton quoi. Même si tu parles mal des filles, je sais qu'au fond t'as compris. Balance ton quoi, un jour peut-être ça changera. Balance ton quoi, donc laisse-moi te chanter. Parler te faire en mmh. Ouais, je passerai pas. Chanter, 
Bienvenue à tous, c'était Angèle chantant Balance ton quoi. Je m'appelle Philippe Girin. And I'm Mary Roundtree. You're listening to Your Grandma Rocks on KBYS, a show about famous women from history. Today we cover the ever-changing and successful career of Catherine Deneuve. The ultimate beauty and chameleon. We saw how Deneuve had strategic dalliances with important directors early in her career and also played into the stereotype of the perfect girl next door that is popular with some French men. Please don't stare at me when you say that. Then, we saw how she took on controversial sexual roles to avoid being typecast as a beauty queen and then switched back to weightier roles to become the grand dame of French cinema and ruthlessly controlled her public image by suing tabloids. That was quite the life. I'm so excited we could share her life with you. Quelle vie 